All right, well, uh, it is now Sunday afternoon, the 17th of May, and I'm here today with, uh, with Bob and Renee Knuth, and um, they are actually Zooming in from their Virginia Beach home, and um, we're very pleased to have them here. They, you'll find that uh, Bob and Renee have very interesting backgrounds, very interesting careers, and uh, we're very pleased to have them with us today. And so, uh, Bob and Renee, good afternoon. Hi. Hi, John. Now, you'll see that Renee's on the left, Bob's on the right as I'm looking at my screen, uh, just for clarification purposes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, um, Bob and Renee, tell, tell us a little bit about your background. Where, uh, where do you come from? What's your growing up like? Uh, your school? What, what, uh, what, what highlights would you bring from your growing up years? Um, I, I, mine's just pretty straightforward. I grew up in a little small, tiny town in West Virginia named Elkins, West Virginia, right in the heart of the state. And I went to public schools because there was only one high school there. It was a town of about 5,000 with maybe five stoplights, not a lot, not a lot to do. Uh, there was a bowling alley. There was a pool for the summer at the Elks Club. And um, I left there and went to WVU, West Virginia University, and I spent 10 years there. So I did four years of undergrad. I did a year in nutritional biochemistry, and then I did four years of medical school, and then I did one year of pediatrics. And so I thought if I probably just need to get out and explore the world just a little bit, um, because I really kind of reached the point where I just knew so many people there, even the janitors in the evening at the medical school. I mean, I just knew everybody. So um, the thought of a big city was, uh, was kind of tempting. So anyhow, I did anesthesia residency um, at George Washington in Washington, D.C. Um, and then I went on to do a fellowship in pediatric anesthesia at uh, National Children's Medical Center in D.C. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of my show. And as we've talked about it before, that, that W or GWU is where uh, Paige currently works. And, uh, right, great place to train. Just a great place. Yeah, learned a lot. And she did her training with a good friend of a, a good family friend of ours' daughter. So about, talk about small worlds. Yeah, in yeah. the small world, the big city. Mm -hmm. Bob, how about you? What What was it like growing up for you? Well, speaking of big cities, I grew up in Pittsburgh. Uh, Mount Washington, went to city schools, um, swam growing up, and that led to me going to West Virginia University, where I met Renee. She was actually my freshman biology teacher. Oh. Yeah. There's a story there, but we'll, we'll save that for another time. Yeah, save it for another time. Uh, after I graduated from school, I went through in computers and management. I ended up working in Germany for what became Unisys. And upon my return, Renee and I got married and started our our, our lives in Washington, D.C. And uh, after she finished her fellowship, we ended up here in, in Virginia Beach, where we've been for uh, since 89. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah, it's been a long time. 1989. That's It is a lot of years, isn't it? A long yeah. time. Well, let, let me let me go ahead and just jump to that to uh, something a little on the personal side here, and that is uh, your faith experience. And maybe you could share with us a little bit about how it was that you came to faith in Christ. I'd like to hear from both of you on that. Okay, I think very similar sort of walks. Um, both grew up. It was uh, probably entrenched in our upbringing. Uh, for me, always believed in, in God. Uh, I'd say somewhere along the way, uh, you wander, uh, and, uh, and, you know, we got married, we did the typical, uh, Sunday school every week, the Wednesday night dinners at the church, we, you know, um, Sunday school for the kids, but I would say that we were lukewarm Christians, and we didn't realize it, we, we're going through the motions and doing all the things that you're supposed to do, but really didn't have that deep uh, relationship uh, until our son uh, found the Lord and he began a path that ultimately led to him, as you know, becoming a Presbyterian minister. Uh, 
the Stuart Dane this last March. And uh, he's involved with uh, RUF, Reform University Fellowship. And really, through Robert's um, deepening relationship, it deepened us. Um, you, you want to be involved with what your kids are doing and interested. And that interest really uh, brought us much deeper. You want to add? No, I think the same thing, just growing up in a Christian household, but again, just really not having the eyes to see into having that real personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And yeah. it's just been really since Robert uh, found the Lord when he was in college and he came home and he said, I want to change my major from economics and German to religion and German. And I said, why? And he said, I want to be a minister. And uh, we were pretty flabbergasted over that. And it took us a while to process that, but we realized that's the best gift that he could have ever given us. Huh. Well, if we, if we could, let's see, you have uh, two children. Mm -hmm. tell, tell us about a little bit more about Robert and, uh, and uh, his, uh, he, he gave you um, a, a gift along the way too. And, um, and then talk about Rachel a little bit too. Sure. Robert is uh, uh, married a girl that was involved with RUF. She was an RUF intern at, gosh, at Vanderbilt and Columbia. And then she worked for the RUF staff near Atlanta. And so they met at a, a conference. Well, prior to that, she was in New York under uh, Tim well, Keller. Yeah, right. Yeah. With the, yeah Tim yeah. and Michael Keller. But um, anyhow, so they've been married uh, a few years, gosh, going on four years. And they have two kids. They have a little boy, Peter, who is almost two in July, and they have a newborn, Abigail, who is five months, so there's 17 months difference. Uh, so they wasted no time having a family, which is great. We're just getting ready to go see them this coming week in Michigan, so oh, can't wait for that one. And then we have a wonderful daughter, Rachel. I might add, he's the current RUF yeah. uh, minister at the University of Michigan. And, Please uh, send your donations to. Right, yeah. He's had a remarkable first year, despite, you know, the virus and everything else. Uh, he's he actually has an intern beaten all, last year. Yeah, yeah, beaten all odds, and um, really the Lord works wonderful ways. But and his the, wife, I will add too, is a wonderful artist, and she draws a lot of landscapes of, of Lake Michigan and some of the scenery up north. She's originally from Leland, Michigan, near Traverse City. I had the the uh, welcome opportunity of uh, visiting with them this past summer, and mm -hmm. um, and Robert was telling me of some of the the struggles and the challenges of working at um, at the University of Michigan, a very liberal school, uh, and not very welcoming to uh, Christian thinking, uh, the Christian worldview. And he told me that that was going to be a challenge, but I, but I think that Robert's up to the task because he's a very, very bright young man and as is his wife. And, uh, and I think they'll do very well up there. And, and you've told me about his ministry up there. I think that's terrific where the ground that he's already gained up there. So praise God for that. That's awesome. Yes. And then, and then Rachel is married to a wonderful fellow named James. They live in Dallas, Texas. Uh, he just recently graduated from SMU Law School and he's his first year um, in private practice. And Rachel is a fitness buff. She teaches um, Pilates and does personal training, um, manages a studio in Dallas. And uh, they both met at the University of Kentucky. Um, they dated for several years. Rachel moved to New York to dance for about a year and a half. James and, uh, proposed to her in Benita. And they were married. And as you know, I they see. were married at Bay Press. I do. I remember that day. That was the day I about blew everybody's ears out with a sound system. <laughs> <laughs> Almost, not quite. <laughs> uh, well, I tried. It wasn't for lack of effort. <laughs> Anyhow, oh, it's my. Both of the uh, both of our kids married gingers. So they're yeah. both redheads. So we yeah. are or blessed with a red-headed grandson. We're not sure what the granddaughter is yet. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, we'll see. That's, that's good. I, I heard something the other day, like it's something, it's something phenomenal, like only 2% of the population uh, are redheads. It's, it's an amazingly it's, uh, low number. Yeah. yeah. Well, considered. 
Uh, well, listen, let, let's, uh, let's go over to the, to the Bible now. I know, uh, Bob, we do, we're in a Bible study together, and, uh, and I know that you're both deeply involved in, in your own personal study of the Bible. And I'm wondering if you could tell me if you have a favorite verse and maybe why that might be. I, I do. Do you want me to go first? first? Okay. Um, there's actually two, and I think that they tie together very nicely. The uh, first one's John 3.16. You know, for God so loved the world, um, you know, that he gave his uh, only son, uh, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And the second one um, I really like is John 14, 6. And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And uh, it just, those two voices um, resonated. Uh, they've resonated with a lot of people down through the ages. Yeah, they, yeah. there's a two great verses. Um, Renee, how about you? Well, I've got some different kinds of one, but my favorite ones, that this one I have on my desk at work is Ephesians 6, uh, 10 through 18, the armor of God. Oh, yes. You know, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. And it just talks about putting on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes for the gospel of peace, the helmet of salvation, the sword and the spirit, which is the word of God. So uh, I really like that because I, every morning when I go to work and go in the operating room, never knowing what you're going to face, yeah. I feel like I need to put my armor on every morning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other, I kind of have, you'd ask for one, but I kind of have another one because sometimes I don't know how to pray or what to ask for, but it's mm -hmm. that Romans eight twenty six. Likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness for we do not know um, that how we should pray. <coughs> I can't read my own writing, and I don't know this by heart, so I have to read it. No, no. <laughs> but the Spirit itself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. So you know, the Holy Spirit is with us, and he knows what we're thinking and what we need. And sometimes just being still uh, and just letting that kind of come forth. You don't have to put anything into words. Yeah. Yeah. Power. That's a that's a, another great set of verses. There. That's terrific. Thank you, Renee. Um, I, last question that I wanted to, to touch base with you on is um, favorite books or what are you reading either now or have read that that's uh, either impactful or uh, something that's just pure entertainment and fun or maybe a serious book or a spiritual book. What uh, what. what would you say to that question? I have to tell you, probably my favorite author, and I usually read nonfictions, but it's Christian fiction, and I love Frank Peretti. Have you ever read any of his books? The, I'm sure you have years ago. Um, the first one he wrote that I loved was 1986, uh, This Present Darkness. I, had, I haven't, didn't read it till about five years ago, but one of the GI nurses that I work with was talking about it, and so I ordered it, I read it, and I've ordered all his other books and read them. So love that book because it just, there's just so much that goes on in forces that we can't see. And it just helps me to remember that sometimes. Um, and then the other one that I really like is Tim Keller, The Prodigal God. Oh, yeah. uh, because after reading that book, I realized that I was the elder son. Hmm. So um, that's always been a take home for me. Yeah. So that's, that's really, <laughs> that really opened my eyes a lot. Yeah, that's one of my favorites too. Love that book. Yeah. All right, how about you, Bob? Well, okay, so from the impactful standpoint, I would say anything Tim Keller is always awesome. Reason for God comes to mind. Or uh, Richard Buckham, the Jesus and the Eyewitnesses, uh, really enjoyed. From an entertainment standpoint, you know, I love the Robert Ludlums, John Grishams, Tom Clancy, anything, James Bond kind of thing. Um, impactful entertainment-wise, college, uh, read uh, Herman Woke, uh, Winds of War and War and Remembrance, and just, as you know, they turned that into a TV series. And it was just, kind of, I guess, the beginning of those short mini-series kind of things, but it just really great. Um, just great how you know the it was the words were written so tend to like the things that you can just sort of disappear into right um so 
Yeah, very good. Well, listen, it's been a delight uh, chatting with you today, and I thank you for giving up some time this afternoon to, to help us uh, find out a little bit more about the Knuths, and we, we appreciate you guys a lot, and uh, I know that you, you still have a life going on up there and a life down here, and it's pretty hard to divide it up, but we always appreciate it when, you, when we see you coming through the door, and um, we are, understand that um, we, we love what, what Robert is doing. At the University of Michigan, and he is on our prayer sheet. And um, any, so any other way we can be useful to your family, I hope you'll please let us know. Thank you for asking us to do this. We feel very honored. We really do. Thank you, John, for yeah. all that you do. Well, thank you, and God bless you. You all have a wonderful afternoon, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you. You too. Okay. Alrighty. Thanks. Thank you. God bless. Bye bye.